Well, you're in the home stretch now. There's only a couple of things left to do. One is the waistband, and the other is the band at the bottom of the hem, if you want it. But we're going to talk about the waistband first. Here is the pattern piece that we cut out right here, and it said, cut one, which is exactly what I did. Here's the waistband right here. The only thing I've done is pressed it down the center. Now, I also have interfaced this, and yes, you can see, it's black interfacing on black fabric, and I'm going to be stitching it with black thread. So you know that you're not going to be able to see all the details that I'd like you to. Therefore, we're going to show you another video, again from the Make It So DVD series, that's going to give you clarity and detail because we want you to have the best information possible. You're going to see a colorful waistband, a different color skirt, and contrasting color of thread. And I'm going to go ahead and put my black waistband on. I'm going to follow exactly the steps that you're going to see in this next video portion and I'll meet you back here at the other end. The technique that I'm going to show you is a relatively easy technique for a beginner to begin with. Of course, there are many different ways to attach a waistband onto the waist edge of either a pair of pants or a skirt. So we're going to presume that I've got my little tube skirt here, and some of you are going to remember that in the zipper lesson for the center applied zipper that I left some zipper extending here so that I could show you once the waistband got applied that that would form a zipper stop. And I also have prepared the waistband piece to go on to this. Now where you're going to find directions for cutting the actual waistband piece that you need for your uh, skirt or pants is in the Surefit Designs Pants Kit instruction book on page 11. And step number 12 shows you how to draw the waistband based on your measurements. It adds a quarter of an inch for ease, approximately an inch and a half for the underlap of the waistband, and an inch and a quarter for the seam allowance dimensions. And also what I'm showing you there shows you how to do a one inch wide waistband, which is what I have done in this sample. Now I've prepared it ahead of time, just a few of the steps, and one of the things that I've done is I've interfaced it. And it, this is an iron-on interfacing, and with iron-on interfacing, you can always tell the right and the wrong side because your right side will feel a little bit fuzzy, and when you feel the underside of that with your fingers, you can actually feel those little bubbles and beads that are going to fuse onto your fabric. And you will also notice that I have cut the interfacing narrower than the width of the waistband. Very good reason for that. You don't want to have interfacing in the seam allowance section because that adds bulk to your seaming and turning and all the clipping and everything that you're going to do. So always cut your interfacing without seam allowances. The other thing that you will notice is that I have done a little bit of pre-pressing on this end, I've pressed in 5 eighths of an inch, and that's going to be the end that will be flush to one side of the, where the zipper is, and then the edge that's going to turn over to the inside, I've also pressed that at 5 eighths. And so those are the two things that I would like you to do in preparation for applying yours. Waistband is get the pressing done. Then I also have a couple of marks indicating uh, the sides of my little skirt and the center front. But first we're going to start with this creased edge right here, the end of the waistband, and I'm going to line that up with the edge of the, where the zipper went in, so that seam allowance at center back. And of course you can see I'm using multiple colors here so that you can make sure that you're seeing exactly the, se the steps that are appropriate. And this is the right side of the skirt or pants and of course that's the right side of the waistband. So I'm just going to place that little mark right at the seam allowance. That of course would be your side seam. And as I come around to the front, 
will line up the center front with the mark that I made on the waistband indicating the center front. And you will notice that I don't have notches in this. When you don't have notches, you can always just use a marking pen or chalk to mark your appropriate connecting points. And as, as I come around to the back side of this sample, I'll be lining up the edge like this with the edge of the zipper and that zipper seam allowance. All right, now we're ready to sew that in place. I have my machine on regular stitch length and I'm going to zip this open the rest of the way so I've got a little bit more maneuvering capability here. I'm going to set everything underneath the presser foot and I'm going to line up the raw edge of the waistband and the top of the, the skirt or pants and I'm going to put it exactly on my 5 8 inch marking and again if you want to place a piece of tape blue uh, painters tape here you certainly can my needles bumping right up onto those zipper coils so I'm going to just take one little stitch forward or I'm going to move it forward just a bit I am going to go forward I am going to back stitch and then oops go forward again and I've just put my needle in the down position in case I need to stop and check anything so now I'm stitching right along that edge of the interfacing because I cut it exactly at uh, the, well I cut exactly 5 eighths of an inch off the interfacing so that it would not get caught in the seam allowance now as I come over a seam I want to make sure that both the seam allowances are open and flat on the inside and again I've already pre-pressed them so that they are but I always still check that even when I know that I've pressed them open because when you're sliding this through those seam allowances can get twisted. Now I'm coming up to the edge that I, I pre-folded in place there and I am going to sew it completely down in this position. So I'm going to go across like this. I'm heading into the seam allowance and my zipper tape and I'm going to go a little bit slower because I am going to come up to that coil of the zipper. There we go. And I will back stitch here. and then go forward to finish it off. And there you have the first line of stitching done. So that was right sides together. So I have a thread there I'll pull out of the, the way. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do, this needs to be pressed up in place. You can either trim and grade first, or press first it doesn't really matter I'm going to get my seam roll out here and I'm going to start on the inside of the waist edge and make sure that it's nice and taut that you don't have any unnecessary folds and then I'm going to press the seam allowance up as if it was going inside that waistband location. This pressing is very, very important. You've got to get that nice and crisp with your seam allowances going towards the inside of the waistband. Okay, the next thing to do is trim and grade your seam allowance. So I'm going to start I'm going to make a little clip right here so that I don't lose that 5 8 inch marking. And notice again, I should mention this before I start cutting anything off, I am going to be cutting across that zipper tape and my zipper head, the tab or the pull, is down here. So that when this gets zipped up, you can see that your waistband is stopping the zipper from going any further. And so that's a really good way to use a zipper that is too long for your project by shortening it in this manner. So now I can cut across the head of that zipper. And just to review with you, 
Trimming is cutting both the seam allowances down by approximately half. And the next thing is to grade the seam allowance. Now, grading means to cut one of the seam allowances in half again. So as we look at this, I don't, and, and the grading of course removes that ridge of bulk. So typically the seam that's going to fold over top of the other seam is going to stay the longest, which means that this beige seam allowance right here is the one that I'm going to trim down by half again. So I'll start over at this edge and just get it started. And I'm going to try and do this so that you can see it in the camera. And this is just fussy work, but it's important work. So I'm cutting down that beige seam allowance, which is going to be the internal seam allowance. Actually, they're both going to the inside, but it's the one that's closest to the, what's going to be the right side. And that finishes up the grading portion. So now we've got the purple seam allowance over top of the beige one. It's reduced the bulk even further and gives a smooth transition on the right side. Now what we're going to do is actually top stitch on the waistband. So I'm going to start at this edge. Way back in the earlier videos, I said to try and always have the bulk of your fabric going away from your sewing machine. So now to top stitch this, I am going to start on the edge of the seam allowance out here and I'm going to top stitch within about a sixteenth of an inch away from where that seam has been joined to the skirt. So the needle goes in the down position and just line up whatever guidelines you have on your foot to be approximately a sixteenth of an inch away from that, that now folded edge of your waistband. Again, I'll have my needle in the down position. I'll go slowly as I go over the zipper edge. There we go. And now I'm ready to just go for the rest of it here. And I will likely backstitch this. It's going to be the front edge. If you're not comfortable with backstitching, you don't need to. You could tie it off if you wanted to. And one more stitch. And there we have it finished. And because I backstitched, I'll just nip those nice and close. Okay, so that step is done. And there's what it looks like. That's the top stitching. Now what you're going to do is, on this end, I better go over here and get this one done. Now I'll remove those threads. This folded edge of the waistband is going to fold over the seam allowance like that on the inside, but I want to finish off these ends right here. So the way to do that is to take the right sides of the waistband and fold them together like that and then take this to your sewing machine and sew across. And you know what I want to do is I want to grade this one waist edge now before I do that. I'm just going to clip the remainder of that and cut the remainder of that away so it's graded. All right. The objective is to reduce the bulk so it makes turning easier. And now I can sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the end. And I will backstitch that.
and that completes that end and you'll see how I now turn this out. This I am going to trim and when you trim this you're going to trim it straight across and then you're going to trim off at an angle and off at an angle and then you're going to grade it again. The more bulk you can get rid of the better this is going to turn and look. There we go, so we've got a nice graded edge. Now I'll take this and turn it to the right side. I've shown you using a point turner before, so I've pulled my point turner to get the corner nice and sharp and crisp, and that's perfect. And now we're going to take this and it folds over to the inside like this, and the last step is to slip stitch it closed. And I'm going to put a couple of pins in here so that you can see what it would look like. You'll be slip stitching from the inside. And this goes like this. This is going to be your finished waistband. So let me talk to you a little bit about slip stitching because that really is the last step. And I have a needle and thread all prepared here with a knot in the end. And I have my finger guard, which I always use when I'm doing any hand stitching. I want to get rid of some of that folded edge in there. So I'm going to do a little bit of a corner trim here. You can't get right down to the folded edge of the where the, you folded the waistband, but I can get rid of some of it like that. Now when I turn this, once again, that produced less bulk on the inside. And that's exactly what I'm striving for, is a total reduction of bulk and not to have any more than is needed. Okay, you can see how much nicer that's going to slip stitch together. And of course, you're going to be using the same color of thread. I'm not, simply because of the demonstration purposes here. But I always take my needle and I start it at the inside to hide my knot. So the knot is way in there. And then I'm going to just take tiny little stitches to get that needle into the inside where that fold is and then you just do a little zigzag back and forth picking up just a few fibers of one side and then the other so that your slip stitching the threads are actually hidden on the inside And so there's that, what it's going to look like. It's totally perfect when it's done. I'm not going to take the time to slip stitch the rest of it, but that's what you would need to do is slip stitch the inside of the, the waistband. And I'll just leave that like this. And when you're done, the underlap from the other side is going to go like this, and your zipper is going to be closed. And once again, you have a very easy application for applying a waistband. As a beginner, I think you're going to find this an easy process to use. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, I invite you to join the Sherpa Designs community if you haven't already. And you can do that in three easy steps. Number one, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Surefit Designs. Secondly, Make sure to sign up for our newsletter list, and you can do that by going to surefitdesigns.com, and there are free gifts to get you started. And if you happen to be a Facebook fan, we do have a private group. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash surefitdesigns. Request to join. Make sure you answer the three questions, and I'll approve you. Thanks so much for watching.